risen. Christ has risen indeed. Happy Easter from all of us at First United Methodist Church in Hollidaysburg. Thank you so much for joining us for your Easter celebration. Soldiers' feet as they guarded the grave. One day, two day, three days had passed. Could it be that Jesus had breathed his last? Could it be that the Father had forsaken his Son? back on the sun despising her sin all hell seemed to whisper just look at him he's dead then the father looked down to his son and said arise my Suffering. 
Will you join me in prayer? God, we are so grateful for this day in which we remember and celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus. It is because Jesus came back from the dead that we call ourselves Christians, because Jesus was the first one to rise again and live with you forever. But God, our hope is in you. We know that that is how it will be for all of us. And so on this day, God, this day of celebration, help us to feel your love and your hope and your joy despite all of the things that each of us are going through, all of the things that weigh on our hearts, the frustrations and the anger and the hurt and the sorrow, um, for all of those things never really go away, God, but may we each experience a peace from knowing that our eternity lies in your unconditional love. Thank you again for your son, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. Happy Easter to you. Let's hear the Easter story as it is recorded in Matthew's Gospel, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he's been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you'll see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and they, there they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We serve a resurrected Savior, amen? Jesus is alive. You know, if there had been crucifixion only, it would not be a complete package. If our Lord simply died on Calvary's cross, it would have been a martyr's death. But when Jesus defeated death, when he came back from the grave, it validated the payment he made, that the blood that was shed on Calvary was powerful enough and permanent enough to take away your sin, my sin, the sin of the entire world, to, to wash it away. And so that is the reason this is such an amazing day, an amazing time, because we have hope, because love that was crucified arose, that our Lord is living and he, he lives in us. It's unique how the gospel writers have different nuances when they share this resurrection story. And um, we haven't heard from the one from Matthew for a while. We often hear from John's version of Mary in the garden, thinking our Lord's the gardener. But um, this version from Matthew, I love what happens with the Roman guards. I mean, these are the guys, military men, entrusted to stand guard to watch the tomb and when that angel shows up, they are just so overwhelmed. What is their reaction? Well, we hear in this passage, they became like dead men. In other words, they passed out. They're so incredibly scared to death that they, they're just totally out of it. 
Not so with the Marys, with these two women who, who come, and they see the angel themselves as well. But the angelic messenger tells them, oh, don't be afraid. Yeah, they weren't at all expecting to find out this news that Jesus was alive. And um, one particular verse that jumped out at me in this passage of Scripture, you know, I've read it many times before, but it just seemed to be such a contradiction and yet so amazing in verse 8 is what we read with these Marys after they're told to, you know, go and tell others as they're on their way before they actually meet Jesus face to face. This is the way that Matthew records it. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. Isn't that kind of a little bit of a conflicted combo? Fear and and great joy. I mean, in a way, there had to be a sense in which the Marys, they didn't know whether to shout hallelujah or to pee their pants, right? Not that they wore pants back then. But um, have you ever been involved in an auto accident? or you're at the scene of just some, some horrific and crazy things that are going on, that you're almost when the adrenaline comes and rushes in, you're, you're not that you have superpowers, but you, you suddenly have the strength to overcome the situation and, and deal with it, and then you just face it head on, and then by the time that's over and sort of the normalcy comes, you ever have that, you just kind of crumble, or collapse in tears because, uh, man, it's just this mixture of emotions, isn't it, going on? And that this one they loved so much was dead and now he's alive again. How do you deal with that emotionally, right? And, And so as we come to this Easter story, I think that many times we're conflicted. So I'd like to talk about some ways in which we can be conflicted and how we can look at that. But the first area, I I think there are some folks, maybe some even listening now, you think, you know, that's a great story, but I don't buy it, right? Uh, Many doubt, right? There are doubters in Jesus' day. There There are doubters today. It's unique that as Paul writes to the church in Corinth, he reminds them there were over 500 eyewitnesses who saw Jesus alive. You know, it wasn't just three or four people or, you know, 11, 12 disciples. There were over 500. And we have to think about this. If if this was a bunch of bunk, if this was merely some kind of fabricated story, why would disciples lay down their very lives to promote a false message? You know, they they would have been fools. You know, who's going to die for somebody else who claimed that they came back to life but never really came back to life. And the fact that these are such fearful people hiding behind closed doors, when they receive Pentecostal power, resurrection power to go and share the good news, they're totally transformed individuals. And it really validates the truth of this. You know, Jesus changed them. And it was such a change that they wanted to go and share that with the rest of the world. I mean, looking at it, doesn't all of nature shout out resurrection to us right now? You had grass that not not long ago was very brown and dead and looked nasty. But now it's green and it's lush and you're having to pull out your lawnmowers, right? And mowing time has begun. You have trees that lost their leaves that looked dead. But what's happening? Blossoms that are appearing here and there. You have daffodils and other flowers that are just bursting and shouting out. That there is life after death. There's a season of dormancy, but no, they're, they're alive. All of creation testifies to it that, hey, there's life beyond the grave. And we trust through Jesus that is life that is offered to us, amen, amen. Well, another way in which we're conflicted is is really about death itself. Now, I've had my fair share of funerals in the last couple years, and um, people do and say strange things at funerals. Uh, 
Now, let me tell you, you're going to think less of me through this, but um, let me tell you what happens more often than I ever think it would in the lounge here at the church. Often we have viewings in there. So people come to pay their last respects and to, to visit with family members. But often before a viewing happens, I will want to be one of the first ones meeting with the family to pray with them before the event. And this is something that happens to me as a pastor. Oh, pastor, doesn't she look beautiful? Now, let me tell you what I'm thinking in my mind and and what it is that I actually say. You know, there we are next to the casket, and they ask, doesn't she look beautiful? What I really want to say is, she's dead, right? She looks dead, beautiful. Dead doesn't look beautiful to me. But my, my pastoral response is, oh, don't they do a great job at the funeral home, right? But um, funeral homes have a way of trying to lessen the sting of death, don't they? So there are some funeral homes that will come here into our lounge. They will bring torche lamps that have pink bulbs in them. Why? So that the light makes the corpse appear more lifelike. I mean, that's why flowers are brought into a funeral home. So living things, you focus more on that which is living than that which is dead. But the entire embalming process is there to make the body look more naturally. And they they put makeup on the, right, on the face and to, to make it look still alive. Now, I remember one of the very first funerals that I went to would be for my own grandfathers when I was around 11, 12. And um, I remember going into that funeral home and being confused. I knew it was my grandfather's funeral. I knew my grandfather had died. But yet part of me is wondering, who's the guy in the casket? Because my grandfather, remember bib overalls that he would wear, he would often have on a hat, sometimes his hair unkempt from that. But looking into the casket, there was a man in a suit and tie and a man whose hair is slicked back and very neat and tidy. And to me, there was this huge disconnect between who I knew and and who was there, right? And um, sometimes we're really conflicted when it comes to death. I mean, for some people, they assume, well, dead is dead, and that's all there is to it. But Paul would write this to the Thessalonian church. We do not want you to grieve as others do who have no hope. For since Jesus rose and came back from the dead, those of us who are in Christ will rise with him. We'll we'll meet the Lord with the air. So in the air, encourage each other with these words. Words of hope that, that death isn't all there is. And for each and every one of us, if we would trust Christ with our lives, if we choose to follow him, death is not to be feared, right? There's something beautiful for us waiting beyond the grave, and life eternal. I mean, this is a time of year we're reminded of the sure things in life, right? Death and taxes, that um, got to pay those by Monday, all right? But um, death is a sure thing for all of us. And what we want to be a sure thing for all of us as well is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So it's why we need to trust him. It's why we need to put our lives in his hands. Another area in which we are conflicted is really in our emotions, right? This coming weekend, we'll have our church services. We'll be fanfare with brass playing at some. And Christ the Lord is risen today. The hymns with greatness. And there will be some people sitting in the pews like this. There's one person, you know, each and every week, others are around, excited, and every time. Now, I've talked with this individuals in other settings. Uh, this person can be very upbeat and laughing and joyous, but when they get into a worship setting, it's, man, like they're, they're crushed. You know what it reminds me of? A, a fatalistic country song. 
You know, country music can be downright depressing. In fact, maybe you've heard some of these before. These are actual song titles from country songs. Ain't nothing like a country song, right? Okay, here they are. I flushed you from the toilets of my heart. Actual song from 1975. Uh, uh, How about this one? I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. Some some can relate to that. Uh, How about this one? You're the reason our kids are so ugly. Makes you proud, doesn't it? Um, Or this one, you were only a splinter as I slid down the banister of life. Ow. Or, Or this, a unique nuance. My wife ran off with my best friend, and I sure do miss him. Hmm. Or this one, a little more familiar. If my nose were full of nickels, I'd blow it all on you. Uh, all right. Um, I've got red eyes from your white lies, and I'm blue all the time. Uh, or, or finally, I'm so miserable without you, it's like having you here. Mm. Country music, Right. Too often, we can be under that hee-haw mentality. Remember the old song from hee-haw? Gloom, despair, and agony on me, right? Some people, it's just like one bad thing after the next of what's, when's the shoe going to drop? When's this horrible thing going to happen? But, you know, if, if God can bring dead things back to life, can't God grab a hold of your situation, whatever you are facing? Can't you trust God to see you through your circumstances and beyond that? Now, I'm not talking pie in the sky, by and by, yesterday, it's going to all be fine. Well, no, that's, that's not reality. Sometimes life downright stinks. But if you have Jesus Christ in your life, your tune is not going to be some fatalistic country song. Your tune is going to be more like what Bill and Gloria Gaither would write. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. We, we have that hope. We have that confidence. We have that assurance that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus because we are overcomers because the one who came back from the dead gives life to our mortal bodies and gives us the hope we need to keep on living. Amen? Well, another area in which we are sometimes conflicted is, well, We are conflicted when it comes to our understanding of this Easter holiday. There are a whole lot of people who are celebrating Easter. And you know what Easter means. It's not any fancy religious term. Easter just means spring. And many are celebrating eggs and bunnies and chicks. And, um, you know, you can show up for worship with your new fancy outfit on and you you can play church right stand up sit down fight 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 um, often the way that it is but you can do all of that and never really celebrate resurrection I mean, the reality is the resurrected king wants to come and be the king of our hearts and the king of our lives. The one who died and rose again wants us to put to death our old sinful selves and choose to to live for him and to be his agent of transformation and, and change. So we can play church and we can be conflicted that we act as if we're Christians and yet we continue living like we always lived and never really seeing a change. But Paul would remind us if anyone's in Christ, they're they're a new creation. The the old's passed away. All things have become new. It's it's a do-over. You're you're different. You're you're changed. And my hope is, is pastor, for for each of you who's listening here by way of YouTube, my hope would be that you wouldn't just be going through this celebration of spring. 
but that you've invited Jesus to come and to change you so that you're not fatalistic, so that you're not conflicted or confused in your own emotions, but you are perfectly clear that you, you know that he saved you. You know that you've given your life to him. You know that you've put him in control. And if you're not sure, if you don't know about that, I'd like to lead you in a time of prayer and closing. So maybe you're someone you're just conflicted with things that are going on in your life. Maybe you're someone you, you used to be walking with the Lord very closely once upon a time, but somehow you just drifted away. Or, or maybe you're someone you just don't know if you've ever even made a decision to, to follow him. Well, why not do that today? On this day of all days, this time of resurrection, invite him in. Choose to believe. We're told if we confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord, if we believe in our hearts God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. Are you saved? If if not, let's do that right now. That the prayer should appear there on the screen. I would invite you if this expresses the attitude of your heart, pray right along with me. Jesus, your Lord, I believe in my heart you have risen from the dead. Thank you for going to the cross. Thank you for dying for me. I believe your blood washes away my sin. Please forgive me. I offer you my conflicted emotions. At times my faith is strong, at times my faith is weak. Take away any confusion and let me see you clearly. I believe you offer life after death. On this resurrection weekend, I give my life to you. Come and live in me. Transform my life. Help me get lost in wonder and love. And praise. Amen. May each of us allow this resurrected king to rule and to reign while we go through this earthly sojourn and when we one day see him face to face. Happy Easter. Amen. taught the sun where to stand in the morning and who told the ocean you can only come this far and who showed the moon where to hide till evening whose words alone can catch a falling star Well I know my Redeemer lives I know my Redeemer lives Let all creation testify within me cry I know my Redeemer lives oh yes he lives the very same God that spins things in orbit runs to the Testifies this life with.
so grateful for your ties, your gifts, and your offerings that help us take the love of Jesus to others. We have started again for the spring our Wednesday night picnic in the park that's happening at Canal Basin Park for families and their children. Every Wednesday at 515 come for a meal and an activity. Um, all are welcome. Thank you for your gifts. Allow us to continue that ministry. And now may the God of the universe, his son Jesus, who came and saved us, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. This is the day you have made To walk in your love and your grace And I will sing to you, my King Forever and ever I will rise up and worship your holy song of your faithfulness On the mountains, through the valley Your love will be my peace And I will sing of your love place you call me to come away Cause this is the day you have made to walk in your love and your grace so I will sing Holy I will sing a song. 